I had a, uh, this morning the, the presentation about what the platform is and what it's not and the myths. And uh, I, I really thought that, that what my organization group has built was a frog and that we were going to use the platform to turn it into Prince Charming. I'm not quite sure if that's going to work now because she told me that that was just a myth. But, uh, but I think we've got a really good foundation and uh, we're going to talk about some of that foundation and those building blocks that we've built at Gulfstream and how we've used those building blocks uh, to, to transform our business. Um, and, and, and we hope to continue to do that through the process uh, uh, onto the platform. One of the things we realized is that the platform that we chose, which wasn't really a platform, it's a smart team, was good for one or two business processes, but it wasn't good for the entire um, ecosystem or environment that we have. So that's one of the main reasons that we're growing. And, uh, but it was the best platform for Gulfstream. You, keeping things simple and starting simple is what we needed to do. And that's what we're going to go through is kind of our simple process and talk about how we can expand that uh, moving forward. So we started our uh, model-based design journey, 3D model-based design journey, on the G450 interior. We chose something that we thought was pretty simple, didn't have a whole lot of complex parts, that uh, we like to talk about um, dumb parts because um, that's what that was. And we did um, purely 3D on our interior and um, it, some installations have drawings and ma machined parts, but it was a business process of 3D. Um, all assemblies build up. The reason, one of the main reasons, one of the main benefits we got out of this was we wanted to share parts across our six sites. Um, we, we do completions um, in Wisconsin, in Long Beach, Dallas, and, uh, and, and Savannah, Georgia, which is our headquarters. Um, we expanded that completions business um, to go uh, through the entire fleet, um, including the uh, G150 and 280, which are built by, um, by Israeli Aerospace Industries, um, and then certified by us and serviced by us. Um, so we, we then expanded from the interiors pr business model. We took the same business model and we moved it, just grew it again into, um, in, into the green airplane, as we call it, uh, with our flagship airplane, the G650, which was completely model-based design. We've since then um, built or designed and built the G500 and G600 concurrently, and those are in flight test now. So what our solution was, was to use true 3D model-based design, a, make the, um, including fasteners, shims, hardware, veneer, whatever it was to make it visually look correct. Um, but we always called it design for inspection. Engineers designed inspection criteria. Um, that's one thread that, that, that carries through, and there's a lot of them, but we really focused on that one to carry it through manufacturing. Um, we rely completely on the geometry. Um, you use as little text as possible. So we don't have any dimensions on the models, um, and the users can interrogate the models for dimensions. Um, I have a great presentation that you talk to anybody about any time about what we call the furball at Gulfstream. And it's definitely, what, keep it simple, don't clog things up, make sure you organize your data so that people can get to what they need. Most, you know, we talk about our digital factories and those dimensions and those, all that is not gonna be used by any of our digital equipment. So we designed and we're working towards that. There's still a lot of people looking at dimensions and there's a lot of people using uh, a lot of humans using the tools, so don't think that that, that goes away quickly. Um, we, we used CATIA V5 in this process, and we deployed it to everyone. Everyone from engineering, manufacturing, quality, um, operations, right down to the shop floor, everybody uses CATIA V5. Um, and we've required our supply base to use CATIA V5. 
at least one seat at Katia V5. They might have had their own processes, but when they integrated with us, we wanted it to be through Katia V5. We had to get that process instilled in everybody so that everybody uh, understood what everybody else was saying. That's the key to, to, to the, whole, the whole digitalization, understanding the data. So 3D model-based type design is the enabler. Um, we, you know, you're, when your type data is your digital mock-up, you are immersed in that, you understand it, the context is always there and it's always correct. That, that was the biggest, you know, the initial thing that, that we did and we thought we really understood. Um, then we realized that when you design as, uh, many, you know, in, design for inspection, there's a lot of tolerances that aren't included, like flexible harnesses, stack ups, all those things that are also part of the, the system that you're designing. And so that's the capability that we're uh, moving through. But this is just the leveraging that simple data and laying other data on top of it. So this is just a, a routing uh, for analysis. Um, we overlay uh, lots of data on that simple data. And that's, a, that's our focus is the PLM system should manage the data, not put, uh, don't put all the data in the model. So these are wires in these bundles. Um, and so that we, um, so that data is overlaid on the model. So when you have a different configuration, you may not need a different model, you may just have different wires. So it's all available and it's managed through the PLM system or the P, um, and not in the, the, the CAD models. Um, and of course, the, the operations guys on the shop floor. This is our factory floor. Um, this is what it usually looks like. Uh, people hold, have Katia up, and the screen you can't see is this Salumina um, as our uh, work instructions and buy offs. Um, this is probably the most famous person at Gulfstream. We've used his picture a lot. <laughs> it, it's, it's sad that our airplane is, the, the, is behind him there, but it, it is a, a, a very large um, structure. Okay, some of the things that we did good is we used CATIA V5. No data conversion, everyone sees the same thing. Um, the designers validate what operations uses through the entire chain. Um, so one of the things we get a lot of is pull up that model and look at this. There's nothing better than somebody on the floor being able to say pull this up and look at it. We're, we, we talk a lot about being able to um, see the same screens and all those kinds of things, but this gives you that ability um, back, you know, 10 years ago with CATIA V5. So we were, that was a big benefit that we had. Um, we restricted the use of CATIA V5 to entities that are supported by STEP. We spend a lot of time in the standards groups working with um, the data, the, the, the smart people trying to figure out what we can put in a standard, what's supported by everybody, because the data has to live. So we spend, we spend a lot of time in that area and it helps us to understand our data. That's the recurring theme is know your data, know your data. Um, so again, we did the CAD for geometry and we also had a rules-based EBOM based on the CAD structure. So the CAD was everything to us. Um, the pain, what comes from that, how does, what, when you have life of the product, life of the data, and our products live for as long as they do, um, it's, it's really, really tough to, to, to maintain that. So that's why we did that requirement for STEP, and we worked with the STEP uh, organizations and developers to get the pieces of the data that we needed into the models, and there's a few little things that we had to um, to wedge in with Gulfstream specific uses. But um, we still use V5 as our type data. It's just that simplified view. Um, my favorite story is, is engineers ask me, can I use this, can I do that? And I say, well, get the step license, export it out and import it back in. Whatever you have left, you can use. And they're not very happy with that statement. Um, so anyways, 
data always goes corrupt, and it, it just is things that you have to watch for and understand, and people make mistakes. So, so this is one of my favorite slides, and I don't think I've ever presented it to the side, not in front of it, so I might have a little trouble pointing at it, but um, on the right side, you have interpreted data. That's really what the data is. That's what we're doing. That's the processes we're building is so that people can understand it. So how do you understand data? We, we train people. They interpret it, we train them, we train them a lot. Um, and then what are they interpreting? The presented data. What's what's presented in that screen? A lot of times we, um, we're good at doing system integrations to other systems and we document them and we know exactly what the impact is. We aren't so good at doing that um, with our human interfaces. And so this is sometimes, this isn't always human, but that's the, the main focus here is what we're looking at. We take the, um, uh, yeah, how do we get that data consistent so we can interpret it and make it live for 50 to 75 years? It's easy, just don't change anything. If we all just stay on floppy drives and we use the environment that we have, printers and you know, typewriters, it would be easy. Just don't change anything. Again, our engineers don't like us and they get really mad. So we had to figure out a better way to do that. So we went to our, our, our step process and we said we're gonna simplify the data. We take those, um, the files, and the data, and we understand that there's a lot of data in those files that we don't need. That's not, people aren't consuming, so we need to simplify it, make it easier. It's not just, it is the right data at the right time, but it's the right data at the right time where you can find it, right? It's gotta be clear. It's, these models are so complex. So this is what, uh, one of our main goals. Um, our primary goals um, of the 3D experience uh, of the platform was to reduce the cost of this complex geometry. If we can get rid of that cost, there's a lot of things we can do. We want to use the type data in the process, not just as a byproduct. It's not just something that you archive, it's something that you use. Um, we leverage the 3D data whenever possible, so we want to make sure that we keep it back so the designer uses it. That same um, value stream that we had of not converting data, we want to get the designers to see the data so they know if there's, wait, this doesn't match. And consistent presentation to all and keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, is, it should be everybody's favorite uh, saying. Um, what we're doing is the solution is on, on the platform. We're gonna um, integrate step AP242 into the uh, part design process and we're gonna use it throughout the build process and inspection. Um, we're gonna leverage the ability to manage multiple file formats and, and use them in multiple applications. So the presentation data will be that simplified format. Uh, this slide is really just a quick slide to show that if I only have five applications on the screen, we've just scratched the surface of what we're gonna do with this data. So we're talking about that 3D shape and we're gonna grow it into the rest of the models. And I just wanted to kind of show that it's both, a, both thin and thick that we need these clients and we need the type data all the way through the process. So that's what I got. Um, so did we make it to lunch?